Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Binary Symmetric Channels. This is Dr. Ali Mugabel. Uh, today we we'll look at a quick review of binary symmetric channels and we'll look at some simple examples so we get some training. We will start by the quick review of what a binary symmetric channel is, then I'll give you some examples and we'll, end, we'll, we'll conclude with two practice problems. So a binary symmetric channel, we have binary input that has a pre a priori probabilities and then it goes through the channel. The channel is binary, the output is 0 or 1. And there is a crossover probability of p. The remaining that you get the correct answer is 1 minus p here. If going from 0 is just like going from 1, so we have p, p, then 1, one minus p, 1 minus p, we get a, a symmetric channel because sending 0 is just like sending 1. Uh, sometimes we say rho or p, so we'll just say p to make it simple. So this channel is a binary symmetric channel. If those numbers are not the same, it becomes a non-symmetric. The transition matrix, which represents the channel, can be represented as this. So probability of going from 0 to 0 is 1 minus p. Probability of going from 0 to 1 is p. And then probability of going from 1 to 0, from 1 here, the second to the first is rho. Probability of going from 1 to 1, from here to here is 1 minus rho. So this is another way of writing a binary symmetric channel. Cool. Now, binary, uh, we, we need to use a binomial probability function. If, if somebody asks, what is the probability of getting a single error? K is the number of errors. So it will depend on the block size. How many bits are you transmitting at, at once? So n choose k. This is the number of permutations. P raised to the power k, number of positions and error. And the remaining must be correct. So the power here is n minus k. So this will give you the probability of making k errors. So k is the number of errors. n choose k is the permutation. We can find this by n factorial divided by k factorial divided by n minus k factorial. So this is how to calculate the n choose k. Now most likely the errors goes, if you are using parity check, which means a single check bit odd or even parity, then the most likely error that goes undetected is the two errors because higher order of errors usually have smaller probability because rho is or p is usually a small number so the fact that you make large number of errors should be should be low probable and of course this is the example used for ASCII ASCII stand for American Standard Code for Information Exchange very widely used for representing uh, uh, letters and numbers so uh, if you are interested in the most likely probability of having two errors, then it's going to be a probability of having two errors. And usually an ASCII you use eight bit representation. So that's seven bits for the number of possible, uh, for the number of letters, for the letters, and then one bit ch charity, uh, sorry, parity check. So it becomes eight choose two. P raised to power two, one minus P raised to power six. That's the most probable error. And that's approximately, uh, approximately 28 P squared. That's a point of being an uh, undetected error. Remember that for the uncoded system, the most probable one is, is that you have one error. So then in that case, it will be 7 choose 1, p raised to power 1, 1 minus p raised to power 7. That's the remaining part of the 8. Plus, of course, other errors. If this is the dominant, then you're speaking about almost 7p. I remember, these are rough numbers, approximations. They're not exact. Just want to give you the impact of adding a parity code. So if you look at the ratio, the probability of error before and after, you'll get that the probability of the ratio between the, uh, the coded and the encoded system should be 28p squared divided by 7p, which is about 4, which is 4p, or 4 rho. So if rho is a small number, this will give you the, uh, this will give you an idea about the ratio between the coded and the encoded system. Okay, so we should get a fraction, number less than one. If it's one, then we are not doing anything by adding coding. Fantastic. So provided that the point of error of the coded system is equal to the point of error of the uncoded system, which is in general not true, because remember that we are just saying that we use P here and we use P here. But in fact, if you are using coding, then remember that you have paid the price in a different way, because we have... Um, this is not fair because we need to increase the data rate if you want to have fair comparison. And increasing the data rate means increasing the bandwidth and increasing the noise. 
or you can just say that the ratio of product of, of, of uh, coded to uncoded is 4p but pay attention that there is a price paid so this is what a binary symmetric channel is let's look at now some examples and maybe we can give um, we can relate to the satellite communication so the first example says an alphanumeric character uh, <coughs> sorry <coughs> alphanumeric characters are transmitted as seven bit ascii words with a single parity bit added over a link with transmission rate of 9.6 kilobits per second so this is the transmission rate how many characters are transmitted each second so that's symbol because you have the data rate and you can go from bit to symbol or words and by just saying that we have 9.6 divided by 8 that will go from bits per second to uh, uh, let's say character per second so each character of a letter or or number or symbol or what have you is 7 bit added to, to it 1 parity bit makes them 8 and this is why we just divide 9.6k by 8 and we get 1200 characters per second that's straightforward now the second question is if a typical page of text contains 500 words with an average of five characters per word and a space between words so we can think that oh, we have five characters and one space it's almost six characters how long does it take to transmit a page so we know the transmission rate for bits for characters we just want to go onto a page so the question is how many characters per page recall that on the average we have five written words averaging five, uh, five character uh, five uh, characters so we have I mean the average of every word so with the space of between every word so we can say 500 times 6 or 500 times 5 plus 500 so we have these are the written characters and these are the spaces and that would give you 6 times 500 which is 3000 characters which is equivalent now you can convert into bits or, or, or characters whatever you like and then of course we can use the rate here to go into seconds so we can do it for example if you use the bits per second or we can go straight straightforward from here by saying it's 3000 divided by 1200 and the answer is 2.5 seconds those numbers I understand they are slow but the idea is just to understand how to do the calculation we're not expected to do these rates in many of the applications the data rate could be much higher than this but this will give you an idea about how to go from bits to symbols to um, pages and so on and you can go to your application if we continue with the example if the bit if the bit error rate on the link is 10 raised to power minus 5 what we have done before is at the transmitter side now we're going through the channel so we're giving the probability of error how many characters per page are detected how many characters per page are detected as having errors how many undetected errors are there now we talk so we can say that the answer to this problem remember that we have a relatively small probability so we can detect one bit error in an eight characters we can detect three five or seven whatever odd number can be detected but we cannot detect the even numbers two four six eight uh, uh, possible errors so the probability of k errors in an inward can be found using the binomial equ equation we have before which is this given given by the following we know that how to find of course the fact the n choose k this is just to recall the equations that you need to solve the problem now for the case of n equal to 8 and k equal to 1 2 3 4 all, all the odd possibilities if you substitute you'll find that as you increase the numbers we have I mean odd or even you get 8 times series per minus, minus 5 for one error it's quickly um, the protein quickly become very small very negligible compared to the first one that's 2.8 times series per minus 9 I'm calling this with blue and green so they can follow and as you go on it's already 10 raised to the power minus 14 that's really very small given of course the initial probability is 10 raised to the power minus 5 all higher order terms are negligible compared with so we don't need even to do the calculation and even p uh, product of having three errors is, is really negligible compared with uh, having one error so we can say that the probability of detecting an error is just the it's just the first term here that is not a very bad approximation so the probability of detecting an error is 8 times 10 to the power minus 5 and since you have 3000 characters per page 
the probability of having one character in error, if you just multiply, we get 0.24. So that's about four pages before we get an error. If this is 0.25, one over 0.25 will give you four pages. So on average, how many pages can be transmitted before a detected error occurs or an undetected error occurs? So we can say now, we already found that it's 0.24. So we should expect to find error every four pages, which I just mentioned before. Now, if you want to use uh, undetected errors, then we'll use the smallest number, which is uh, having two errors. And in one page, we have 3,000 times 2.8 times 10 to the power minus 9. And this is the probability of having uh, undetected error in, in, a, in a one page. So if you want to find the rate, you divide by one, one by this number, and you'll find out one over this number will give you 119,000 pages before we would expect to find an error. I mean, if you divide about a typical textbook number, you'll find um, this is just uh, this is just a number, just to give you an idea about it. You will need to transmit a textbook uh, two two times, 222 times before you get an error, an undetected error. That's that's, that tells you how good is the quality. So, again, if, if you are, well, we need to send about one one nine thousand before we get pages before we get an error that's undetected. Okay, for that, if you want to see how many books, we can pick a number for an average book, and this is just a, a number that I got, so I got two two two. No, there is nothing special. If you want to see the, my assumptions, then you can divide this number by that, and you get the number of pages assumed. We can ask different other questions, but just to give you an idea about how to relate to the application. Now, since it takes 2.5 seconds to send one page using this rate, it takes 22 minutes to transmit the whole textbook. It takes 82 hours uh, uh, that need to be elapsed before uh, undetected error occurs. Okay, so this is just to relate the number of bits by the transmission rate, and we can go from bits to seconds. Once more, these numbers are, of course, very slow, but the idea is just to learn the calculations. Now, the first practice, that if the probability of error is increased to 10 raised to the power minus 3, how many detected and undetected errors are there in, the, in a page of the text? You can pause the video and try it yourself. Once you are done, I will share the answer with you. So pause now if you like. The correct answer is with p equal to 10 raised to the power minus 3, the new probabilities, if you do the, if you repeat the calculations now, they have changed dramatically, and you can see that those numbers are now significant. But still, maybe we can think of ignore the, the remaining probability relative to the smallest ones, because it's, an, it's a relative measure, although this is still large, but relative to the original one is negligible. The probability of undetected error now becomes 8 times 10 raised to the power minus 3, and now there will be detected error every, uh, there are 24 detected errors per page on average. So this is relatively very large compared to what we have before. The probability of undetected errors, though, is going to be 2.8 times 10 raised to the power minus 5, and that translates into a number of pages of 0.08 error per page, or we need about 12 pages to get undetected error. Those are now significant, and we have to worry about them. So uh, at, at bit error rate, BER, that stands for bit error rate of 10 raised to the power minus 3. This is really a small, uh, relatively very bad channel, and this is the lower limit transmission of text. If, you, if it's worse than this, maybe you need to stop transmission and find a solution. So this is the, the, the lower limit for transmission of text using single parity error checking. Of course, it depends on the application. Okay, here is the last example, the next example I'd like, I'd love you to try it yourself. I will not share the answer here, but I'm sharing the code. You can um, you can find the PDF for, for the slides in the link in the description. You can download and you can uh, copy the text and paste it in MATLAB and or reproduce the text. If, uh, or you can go to the web page and you might find the, the code is shared. So the question is, three binary symmetric channels are concatenated in cascade. 
as shown in the figure below. Assuming that all channels have the same crossover probability, so they are the same. Find the equivalent binary symmetric transmission matrix or channel for the overall channel in terms of P. If we want to represent all of this as one, you better draw the first, the second, and the third, and then you'll understand what I mean, that we can represent all of these as one single binary symmetric sum. I would like to do, I'd like you to do it in general. First here, what is the equivalent to this channel? And if you are done, you can go to part P, if to the next part, if P equal to 0.25, uh, calculate the transition matrix for the overall channel. So substitute and give you, and, and please type in your answer in, in, in the comment section and we can cross and compare. It would be fantastic if you write a MATLAB code that uh, not just uh, substitute, that, that uh, do Monte Carlo simulation, which means we generate bits, we, go, we take it through a channel, we generate random number, and then we say if this number is above P or below P, if it's above P, we introduce error. I mean, if we uh, if it is uh, in, in the error region, we have error. Otherwise, we, we send it as is. We complement uh, this, uh, the data. We repeat this again. If we, uh, with a given probability, we, we, we change, we introduce error or otherwise. So I'm sharing the code with you here, where we have uh, all the requirements. You just need to run the code. The beauty about the code is we make it generic in terms of P. And also, it will be great if you can have it uh, generic in terms of number of channel, binary symmetric channels. So I can have two, three, or four cascaded. So we have loops. So we have here the crossover probability as input. We have the number of bits that we need to simulate. Of course, the higher the number, the more accurate. But it will take, uh, but it will take, uh, of course, more time. Here's the number of channel, the number of loops that we can introduce. And then, of course, we start generating the random binary sequence. And then we simulate the transmission matrix, uh, the transmission. So if we, we take a loop for the number of channels, and here we, we generate random number, and we compare it with B. So we have a logical outcome. And then, of course, we XOR to introduce the error. Of course, this, this error position will give you the number of errors. If you want to count the error, you just sum the error positions, or you compare, if you like, if you want to be more uh, like a practice, you, you compare the received sequence with the transmitted sequence, and whenever they have difference, you get an error. So you count this, and you compare with what you have found theoretically using the matrix, and we are plotting the two cases. We are displaying the numbers in two cases. So please uh, run this code and try different number of channels and uh, try different number of different crossover probability. Hope you all the best. Enjoy the MATLAB code. And please share your answers in the comment section. We'll see you in uh, coming videos. Thank you for being good listeners.